I know true. like Dutch people who would be like, no, I don't like my family. No, I'm going to Friesland. I'm yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're okay with it. Uh, <laughs> no one can tell them otherwise. Yeah. It's like, no, I don't like my aunt. She told me that uh, my dog is rude. And, I, and I'm like, <laughs> wow. And you're just so, you're like, you're good. I am so good. I have new friends. That's my family. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, just like that. Good for you. Yeah. You have literally chosen you. I'm a king. Yes, I'm a king. Welcome, listeners and viewers, to the African Narratives Podcast. My name is Anita. And I'm Dr. Deborah. And today, we're going to take you on a journey. We will be speaking on the sense of community in Africa and Europe. I promise you, it's going to be very, very exciting. So remember to hit the like and subscribe button, and also, of course, the button, the bell, so that you can get a notification once we have new episodes live. Perhaps we could maybe, like, speak on our personal experiences since I was born in... Kenya, but I grew up in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was two when I came to the Netherlands, and I've had my fair share of community-related experiences. Yeah. But of course, I'm also really curious to hear what your experience is yeah, yeah. in uh, this matter. Yeah, it's, uh, it's actually a good swap that we have, that you were born in I Kenya, so. raised in the uh, <laughs> Netherlands since you're two, and then yes. I was born in Tanzania, yes. and then moved to Netherlands uh, exactly. you know, six years ago. Yeah. Um, so yeah, m most of my childhood is really rooted in that African way of living. And to be honest, that sense of community, it, in, we have to say it takes a village and it literally exactly. takes a village That's back really home true. whereby if you have a child, for example, the aunties, the uncles, the neighbor, the sisters, the cousin, everybody will look after that yes. after, after your kid, I get you know? That. Yeah. And here it's like each one to themselves. Oh, de oh yeah, <laughs> like definitely. Your kid, your kid. Even getting your mother-in-law to come yes. and look after your kids. Here you have to make an offspring. Uh, no. <laughs> it's not a, <laughs> it's before, not a given. No, even. before the baby is born, you have to check calendars. Mom, when can you, when, when are you available? <laughs> Tuesday at 3 p.m. for one hour. But 6, I'm going to walk. Yeah. I'm going for a walk. So yeah. I cannot. Exactly. <laughs> it's so crazy. But yeah, in, uh, yeah, in Africa, it's uh, so different. Like m our parents, even if you're living in diaspora, they will come and stay for three months with you, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's, uh, I don't have kids myself, but I see that with my siblings. That, uh, yeah. But in, in, in Europe, it's, uh, you don't get that. If your mother does that, you're really, really it's, privileged. Like, yeah. So, yeah, that's just one example of things I've seen that are, uh, yeah, quite different. Another funny thing is, mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but have you ever gone to a Dutch person's house during dinner time or oh lunch time? Oh, my gosh. Do they feel I you? am literally <laughs> traumatized because, I mean... And I was young when this happened. Yeah. So a friend of mine lived like, I think, 20 minutes by bike from my place. Mm -hmm. And let's say we were supposed to meet at 7.30 or something. And mm -hmm. then we're going, we're supposed to go out, whatever yeah. that meant at that age. But then I was like, okay, I, I'm ready to leave now. Let me just go at like 5.30, maybe quarter to six. So that means we'll have more time together to mm -hmm. do whatever our makeup or whatever. We're, I think 16 or 15 or something. Mm -hmm. So I get on my bike and I'm like, oh my gosh, she's going to be so happy to see me because I'm not yeah. here at seven. I'm there at, let's yeah. say, quarter to six, 5.30. So I get to the house, the big smile on my face. And I'm like, yes, yes, she's going to be so happy. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even call her because we didn't have WhatsApp or oh, yeah. it was just, I'll see you then and then I'll see you then. That's it. I didn't have any restrictions or rules at yeah. that time. The good uh, days. In terms <laughs> of like, hey, don't come before. So then I, I ring the bell and everything. And the mom opens and she's like, Oh, my son, I'm at eight. And I'm like, and at that point, of course, I, I mean, I've been in Holland for, uh, since I was two, mm. I was 15 at that time, and I did not have a clue what yeah. this meant. So I was like, okay. So then I said, eight smack look, I guess. And then, mm. and they said, okay, come in. You can wait in the living room. And uh, we're about to finish our food. <gasps> yeah. The shock I felt. That's incredible. I right? didn't know if I had to run. <laughs> like just without saying anything, just leave and just run and no notification, anything. <laughs> or I, I just froze. So uh, I basically just froze. I never asked her anything. I just carried on like it was a normal thing for me as well. But yeah. I was shocked. <laughs> it's it's really so weird. And like time that was so share. slow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was like, okay, like, <laughs> it was going so so slow. <laughs> oh, so bad. But yeah, it's. Quite interesting, but um, I mean, let's get uh, down into now family family lives in uh, in Europe. Social circles and professional networks in Europe is what constitutes a community. Of course, but yeah. uh, for us, it's uh, it's a bit different. Whereby uh, a community for us is everybody that interacts with us, yes. family or mm -hmm. not family, neighbors, you know? extended neighbors, family, everyone. Yeah. You know, 
yeah so it's uh i don't know what are your thoughts on that like community community in the netherlands or in europe for, for you community in the netherlands is only a community once you voluntarily actually i well not really voluntarily once you actually consciously choose for that to be your community yeah. and i think for me the difference in the african community is your community whether you like it or not yeah. it's not a choice or anything yeah. it's just you're born into it like i grew up with a few kenyan uh families and those were my cousins mm -hmm. and even my dutch friends when i told them okay they're not really my cousins they're like what yeah. really you lied to us yeah <laughs> but i was like ah it's just the same literally we had i mean i was with older so whatever i used or whatever yeah. i had toys would always go to the other yeah. uh, cousins yeah. and i think in the netherlands it's only like hmm is it maybe a football club which you're you know you're a member of or any other activities like okay mm. that is the community but as yeah. soon as that activity whatever brings that community together is done it's done yeah yeah it's not like it's a natural organic way of being i'll say yeah yeah it's funny you said that because um, in Tanzania we call everyone dada or kaka, which is sister or brother. Yes. And uh, I remember once I traveled for work with my client and he had me call a shopkeeper dada. Ah. He was like, oh, that's your sister. <laughs> and I'm like, no, it's just the lady I usually come to buy my stuff exactly. from. So she's my sister. You know, it's yeah. just that, you know, for us it's family and community. Oh. It's you know I, so I don't know natural. if that's the socialism the yeah, it's socialism. you always look out for each other in a way it's yeah. not like you can get stranded somewhere or you can mm. get stuck once they're like your communities around yeah. well, here you can have a flat tire and you have to call the Anve Bay yeah. if you have yeah <laughs> no one will even stop no one will the, stop no. it will just bypass you and it it's funny because it's so deeply rooted in me that whenever I see someone who was who's having troubles or mm. uh, elderly people who are maybe having difficulties walking I'm always trying to find a sense of okay is there something i can do to like make sure they're okay yeah it's just an automatic thing i don't yeah. need to even think about it. i think i sent a video to femi our producer mm. about it was a real uh, uh what do you call it a meme mm. about a girl coming home a nigerian girl coming home she's like la, 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 la. i don't know if it's from school or work whatever she comes home goes to her bedroom and there's someone sleeping in her bed mm. and then she's like mom there's someone sleeping in our bed yes that is the cousin sister brother's mother sister <laughs> daughter aunt of blah, blah 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 she's staying with us for five months <laughs> yeah. and i think that 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 um i wouldn't say like that not that the part where you really overthink mm. that's not really present where you say like hey i need help of course come yeah. over yeah How, uh, we'll do whatever it takes in order for you to mm -hmm. have your basis or settle yeah so it's like no questions asked yeah and kids i mean you have an opinion when you're 18, but until then, <laughs> you yeah. just go with whatever. <laughs> yeah, you're under my roof, my rules. My I, <laughs> I bring in anybody. <laughs> so as a kid, you grew up seeing this. I yeah. mean, I also grew up with my aunt living with us and later my cousin. And then my cousin also invited mm. her, her cousin. <laughs> and then he invited another friend. So and yeah. we're not living in a huge villa or anything, but we mm. made it work. Yeah. yeah. And of course, my mom would go to work and then there would always be babysitters. She would come home and then there's food. So yeah. we had a little community in our house and that's how I grew up. Mm. So one of the first things when I, I had my own house was like, I need an extra room just in case. <laughs> and then literally I have I have my bedroom, of course, my son's bedroom. And and then there's this bedroom, this extra room that has never been used, uh -huh, yeah. but it's there just in case. Yeah. I have a double air bed, I have a single air bed. I have even positioned some furniture in that room so that the bed can easily be positioned there and that the, the guest, whoever yeah. those may be, yeah. can be comfortable. Because yeah. I cannot imagine having a house where, I mean, of course you have the living room, you can always improvise, but in my head I always have, mm. like, oh, but what if the visitors come or the people? So in my head it's yeah. so deeply rooted yeah. that that's always going to be an option and I'm, I'm up for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, interesting. And now you, you said that, that like ev we welcome everybody yes. as long as yeah, like if we have the means to help you in whatever manner, no matter how small, exactly. could be just giving you a plate of food or yes. giving you a, a place, place to, to lay your, your head. You know, that's uh, yeah. But also when you mentioned that your friend, uh, you were supposed to meet up at seven and he showed up at five thirty, yes. and that was a big deal. That was shocking. Uh, that's also something else that I find a bit <laughs> strange here. Like yes. even with friends, you need to even make an appointment. Friends months in advance mm -hmm. or weeks in advance or something yeah i'm used to oh yeah i'm for, i'm coming from work oh yeah let me pass by uh anita's <laughs> place there let's have exactly. a quick chat we'll even have a, a tea random or coffee, dinner, or tea, coffee yeah yeah and then the day is done and you go home you're happy you've seen your friend yeah 
But here it's oh, uh, no, 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 constant no, no, no. Uh, afspraak. Yeah, afspraak. <laughs> afspraak. Like, yeah. Oh, what, what do we have here? Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Like, I already removed my chicken from the freezer, so I don't know what yeah. you're planning. Chicken for one. No. But I'm going to eat my chicken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. Oh, that's crazy. I mean, yeah, there are so many examples that I have. There was this uh, mm. TV show with Morocco. I mean, it's not only in um, the African community, it's also in the Latin community. And yeah. Uh, there was this show I was watching with Moroccan elderly ladies. They were following them, like going for picnics and doing some, some uh, random activities, I'll say. So they went to barbecue, mm. and they needed this. I don't know what you call it, the the fire starter for yeah. the barbecue. I don't know what you call yeah. it exactly. It's fire starter. Let's call it fire yeah. <laughs> Lunch or uh, I don't know what you call it. But anyway, so they had everything ready. The meat was ready, prepared. The barbecue was ready to be set, but they didn't have this fire star starter. I'm not blocky in Dutch. Mm. So they went to the next couple. I mean, mm. of course, they were Dutch, and they went there, <laughs> and they're like, "Hey, hey Meneer, hey, hey, can you please help us with like maybe a, a quarter of your amak blokje, so that we can also have our barbecue if you don't mind?" Oh, but he is a guess the what? Car. He said no. He had a whole pack of amak blokjes. Oh. And I'm like, sometimes I really wonder, like, is it so bad to like be open and sharing, uh. or like I really ask myself, like, what is the under Laying thing yeah. that makes it so important to not share. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's just selfish, you know. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, he's not gonna die. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Half a block. I mean, he's not gonna on. die. I mean, even if like, okay, come to my barbecue, you help me or whatever. Maybe mm. it's a quarter, maybe she said half and he was like, a quarter I'll give, but a half <laughs> We don't know. I have no idea what uh, runs through someone's mind when uh -huh. you have the opportunity to help someone and you choose not to. Yeah. And here we are, we give each other onions and salt yes. and this and that in the middle of the night. Yeah. You know, it's a, yeah, it's a really a big cultural difference there. Yeah, but where do you think that really stems from? I mean, I grew up here, maybe at some point I'm like, yeah, this is just the way it is and mm -hmm. I roll with it. But mm. maybe from your perspective, I would say like coming to the Netherlands, later, what would you say that it could I be? Can't, I can't even place it because initially I thought they're just being very practical and efficient and you know Dutch extreme efficiency. Yeah, Dutch efficiency you know yeah extreme planners in everything that everything that I have is planned, has, for. It's planned for so oh, if I yeah. take out a small piece of it you are ruining my the plan thing is all, you know what I mean and I think that has gone too far yeah to an extent that also that essence of humanity it's kind of there. flies away with that as well you know yeah I think yeah uh, especially the part of humanity it's yeah like you overlook the human aspect of it yeah yeah exactly it's a uh, it's quite quite strange. This is mm. some things that I found. The Dutch bluntness, I get it. Yeah. Fine. Be direct, save That's my time, let's go. Practical, have a sandwich for breakfast, lunch, dinner, it's fine, practical, <laughs> it's efficient, go. But that essence of sharing is not there. It's and not I really there. don't get it. Why? And, and I mean, uh, again, I, I grew up here, I've been here since I was two, and of course I grew up in a Kenyan household with a Kenyan way of being, mm. and still stepping outside every day of my life. I'm not even surprised when I get surprised about the things that I see. <laughs> it's yeah. quite funny because at some point you think like, okay, now, and at, there was a period in my life that I would really get angry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, because the funny thing is like, because it's so deeply rooted in the culture and I'm not being negative at all. Please mm. viewers, don't take this as an attack or negativity. This is my personal experience. It's that it's okay if you are generous and they take, and they take, and they take, mm. and they take, and, they, and there's no limits. Yeah. But then when I realized, I was like, wait a minute, when was the last time I was invited for a tortilla wrap? Yes. <laughs> Instead of a, <laughs> a glass of syrup yeah. with nothing. <laughs> and I was like, I'm seeing a pattern here. This person is always coming to my house saying, ooh, ooh so fervent, so fervent, right? I'm being yeah. so spoiled. I was like, spoiled. I just literally yeah. took an egg, I took a this, a paprika, and yeah. I, I made something. <laughs> <laughs> These drinks, they've been here forever, so let's just finish them. Yeah. And then, I mean, I'm, again, maybe it sounds like I'm being negative, but I'm just trying to understand the whole experience. And of mm. course, we'll come with our conclusions and see what where this will take us. But yeah. and then you'd visit and you'd be like, huh? And your stomach is like, go, 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 go. Yeah. Uh. So you just say, okay, I have to go home. <laughs> so it doesn't like you being generous or open or sharing doesn't trigger mm. the other person to be. It yeah. does. It has nothing to do with. <laughs> not with at all. It's a. Uh, there's no. What well, it's not contagious no. apparently. No. <laughs> it's, uh, it's one-sided a bit. Yeah, it really is one-sided. Meanwhile, please don't forget to subscribe and follow us on uh, uh, our channel. 
Africa Web TV. And in there, you will find the Africa Narrative Podcast as well for more content. We'll be back. So you are from Ghana? I'm right? from Ghana. In Africa, we have a compound. You can have a, a whole compound. Everybody know everyone. But here, you, you come out. You think you can see someone that is in a compound or something? No, everybody have his own building, a house, apartment. Even if you live in an apartment, never, you don't talk to anyone. Sometimes it happens. But in Africa, it's different. We are built different also. We are connected. Europe, they are not connected. Yeah. They, they have a brother they don't talk to, like maybe 10 years. You see, so they are different than how we are. We are, but you know, it has its two sides. Sometimes maybe it's good and the other side too, because... What, what would you say is maybe good about the European system? I think they think about themselves more, you know, and we are like, think about uh, the whole family. And I think sometimes they move forward than we, because if I have 10 euro, I need to share with everyone, yeah, 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 that <laughs> you know, and you know, and them, you understand, and them, they are saving, they're saving and saving the money, you know, and it makes them sometimes move forward. But I think that's not the life also. We Africans are different than them. We are back. Please join the discussion in the comments below. You know, leave your opinions or your experiences about the differences in the, the European and the African culture or just anything that you want to share that could enrich this discussion. And I'm back here with Anita and I'm Deborah. And we are going to now dive into the pros and cons of these different types of society. I mean, we've seen that uh, yeah, the African model is more community-based and the yes. European is more individualistic. Yes. Now, as much as uh, the, the pros to that community feeling, mm -hmm. but it might also come with uh, some disadvantages. Yes. For example, losing a sense of individuality. Oh, yeah. And then also um, uh, putting a stress on resources. Yes. For example, an uncle can call you, please send me money because you live in Europe or something. Yes. Or, or, yes. or people feel... Some people might feel that they are entitled exactly. to some sort of help from you while you are also strained on resources. And, and explaining that looks like, oh, that like you you're don't a bad person. To. You don't exactly. want to help me out. You live in Europe. But, yes. you know, just understanding all that. I don't know. What are your experiences on this matter? Or what, what do you think are some of the cons? Actually? Yeah, I think that the, exactly what you just summarized. Um, the fact that you're part of something greater than yourself mm -hmm. means that you have a responsibility towards the people who are in the same community, whether you like it or not. So of yeah. course, there are, there, are, there, are, there are pros, but the cons, I would say indeed that like, if you're being asked for help and you don't deliver as fast as you would expect, then of course you're the bad person or you're like the person who doesn't want to share. Yeah. Um, it's like uh, my money is their money or vice versa, you know, like there's always this expectation that you look out for each other in good and bad times. Yeah. And of course that can also put a pressure, but I think as you slowly but surely integrate into the Dutch culture, mm -hmm. you also feel like, hey, but wait a minute, yeah. do you even know how I got my money? Do you know that yeah. I wake up every morning, jump on my bike at 4 a.m., let's say, to just get this money from the job that maybe I don't even like and I'm miserable about? Yeah. And I was sick last week, did you even ask about that? So then you start thinking about exactly. counting things. Did they ask if I was sick? Mm -hmm. I have been, my son has been ill. Do they even know what I do? Yeah. So then you start thinking, like you start count, putting counter arguments as to why they should back off yeah. and then it becomes this whole hostile situation yeah. and then if you want to take it even further in terms of communicating and showing your feelings yeah. something that is in the Dutch culture a bit more integrated or European culture I'd say mm -hmm. expressing your emotions uh, what I've seen in the Afri African culture is that it's not really a thing to do yeah like call someone and say hey I know that you're in need but have you considered that at this point in my life, I am struggling so, so much. And all I get from you is a text, send me an M-Pesa. What do they answer you? Uh, uh, if you don't have the money, just tell me. Why are you telling me your problems Exactly. Now? <laughs> like, hey, hey, maybe you should just go to, uh, go for a walk or just buy a beer or just do, you know, uh, yeah. talk to your, talk to you. Hey, uh, let me call your mother. Let me just, let me see what's going on. Hey, and then the whole gossip starts like, hey. I spoke to her. she's I think she's unstable, huh? Yeah. There's some mental something. I just asked her one small simple question. Yeah. <laughs> and then that escalates. Do you want to go there all the time? No, that's the So thing. you yeah. just have to be like a chameleon and then choose and pick your battles. And yeah. what I have learned is like the way you'd be direct in the Netherlands to maybe your relatives or friends in Kenya who have been brought up there, just have a little bit more strategy and tact. Yeah. 
like for instance if someone or a cousin or someone i'm not naming anyone by the way <laughs> if someone would they will know me, themselves <laughs> always asking me for money money but then i see you traveling here you're doing this you're going even more places than i am mm -hmm. and i was like wait a minute i've been sending you money but you've been traveling <laughs> so now i heard like um yeah, 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 COVID really hit me, la, 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 la. And then I said, okay, COVID also hit me. Did you know it was an international pandemic? It was a pandemic. Yeah. Meaning it's worldwide. Yeah. <laughs> and that was the end of the uh, send me m uh, Because I, I had yeah. to. I, I mean, either you get, mm -hmm. you get bullied for, you know, you, you get bullied actually for not doing it. Yeah. And you get this whole thing that goes around the whole, which you, I mean, I don't want. No, <laughs> exactly. That's yeah. when I'm like, okay, let me just be. Now my Dutch hats and be like, I don't care. No. Do what you want, but I am not participating in your no. in your show. No, <laughs> not at all. And it's so difficult for us to cut off family. Yeah. That's the thing. It's not something that's expected mm -mm. to happen. I think the Europeans, it's so easy. white people, it's very easy for it's them so to cut easy. off people. And for us, it's like cutting off. Who? Oh wow! Yeah. Then uh, the elders will uh, sit down and say, "This ch this child has no manners." Yes. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> yeah. No. It's a it's a whole whole thing. But so yeah. The whole mm -hmm. thing that I like about the Dutch community and the culture is that boundaries are set. Yes. And even till this day, I am thirty five, turning thirty six. Mm. I struggle with that. Yeah. Because growing up, you don't have boundaries. You're, not, not, you're not taught like, hey, of course they say like, if you don't like something, mention it or just say something. But it's not like. Mm -mm. Um, there was a time I think uh, a colleague of mine. She had uh, some issues with her, you know, some private issues. I was listening, but actually, in reality, I had so much work to do. But I was just there, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, oh, one and a half hour. Oh, I mean, I felt sorry for her, and I felt like, no, she needs me right now, so this is mm. what I need to do mm. as a friend, and whatever I am doing, it's not that important. Guess what? The next time, <laughs> I, I had an important issue to discuss. I think after five minutes, she interrupted me. Anita, I'm so sorry, but I really need to get this email out. Blah, blah, blah. And you know what? I wasn't even angry. I was like, yeah. wow. Yeah. I even applauded her. I was like, I need to learn that. Yeah. Because, yes, of course, we're important. We're community. But at the same time, we're also responsible for our families. We have mm -hmm. expectations that need to be met. We have, yeah. uh, 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 what do you call it, responsibilities as well. Yeah. So yeah. in one way, I can really respect the whole, like, boundary it's fine. Is. Yeah. It's fine. This yeah. is your boundary. I respect that. I'm not going to chase you with yeah. my story. Yeah, no, that's true. We we struggle a lot with boundaries as Africans, and all, uh, we expect there's so much that's expected from us from yes. the community, which would be everybody You're around. You're born us, into you know? it. You're born into it. Yeah, Femi was talking about uh, status. We really um, also, uh, you know, we want status. Yes, do not in everything. Exactly. You know. And because of that, we find ourselves putting, not setting boundaries because we and want to of show off. And a lot of things that we do, we do them so that somebody can see. Yeah. Or, or how or will the, the society will see me? Exactly. You know, it's uh, parents as well yes. do that to, uh, to us. Either become a doctor, lawyer, yeah, or engineer. Exactly. Anything else is not, no, it does not, not worthy. Work, you know, yeah. So there's that as well. But then that puts some limitations in, you know, mm -hmm. having you setting your own way of being life, your own being person. your own person. Exactly. It's uh, it, it comes in, yeah, in between and it's, yeah, Something it's really you have hard to, to learn, learn again. actually. It's, yeah. You have to unlearn whatever you were brought up with yeah. and are now growing up in this society. You have to learn like, you yeah. have your own opinion, you have your own direction, you can set your own life without yeah. feeling this burden on your shoulder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, some, some parents are, are easy. Uh, easy on us, but um, I think I can say a majority of uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, parents are not like that. They expect things from you, and if you do not deliver, it's like, oh, hey, this yeah. child is embarrassing <laughs> me. Oh, yeah. do, where am I going to put my face and in this? And there's the neighbor's now. child who's doing better. Uh, yeah, why don't you be like, <laughs> like no, my child? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, did you hear she's going to med school? Mm. Yeah? And you're just young to do what? You want to do marketing? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 my God. What did I do wrong now? Yeah. Hey, God. You know, it becomes also it, dramatic. It and does. you're like, okay, shit, For fine. No I'll reason. go to med school too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crazy, yeah. crazy. It's crazy. always that whole thing like failure is not an option. Yeah. And also later in life, I've been learning like, you have to fail to succeed and to know your way. What are yeah. we talking about? Failure is not an option because I'm a superhuman and I cannot yeah. let my people down. And yeah, then also, of course, now uh, coming into the part where I came here as a second generation uh, uh, Kenyan, mm -hmm. uh, first generation, of course, they came here, they took whatever they could, ex they could manage, like jobs. It, it was just like, hey, we're happy we're here at some point and we'll make the best of it. We made this decision, so let's 
make the best of it. So then the, the pressure that's on the second generation, if I look at if it's Ghanaians or Nigerians, my age, we, I mean, there's no one who's just slacking. Yeah. Everyone is always talking about, I'm going to start a business. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Yeah. And I'm just going to go on the holiday. And I'm going to do this. And every, everything is going to be the max of the mm. maximum because you cannot fail your parents. Yeah. They came all the way here. They struggled in the Dutch society, but mm. weren't able to follow the culture or even the language. Yeah. So it's up to us to like be like, wow, I did not disappoint you, mom or dad. Yeah. I am going to make sure that the third generation is not even gone like suffering will not be even in their dictionary yeah oh yeah so that's also a pressure you have to deal with and that's also community that's also because i know like dutch people who will be like no i don't like my family no i'm going to fleece lunch and yeah peace out. <laughs> and they're okay with it <laughs> no one can tell them otherwise yeah. it's like no i don't like my aunt she told me that uh, my dog is rude and, I, and I'm like, <laughs> wow and you're just so you're like you're good I am so good. I have new friends. That's my family. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, just like that. Good for you. Yeah. You have literally chosen you and yeah. no matter who is in your surroundings, they have yeah. not dictated your life. Yeah. So uh, I'm like, those, one of, those are the cons, I mean the pros of this whole yeah. individualist indiv 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 <laughs> and the uh, community yeah. Um, sense. Yeah, yeah. It does have, have a toll though on mental health as well, you know, that, yeah, uh, yeah individual, indi individual, <laughs> <laughs> you have to enter like, wow, yeah. individualistic, <laughs> yeah, this individualistic, individualistic society, society. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. or by, I mean, it can bring some feeling of loneliness as well, yeah. maybe that's why also there's high numbers of depression and oh, stuff, yeah. you know, depression. that's something. And also when yeah. you hear these stories in the news, like, oh, so-and-so was in her apartment for, for like three weeks and nobody yeah. knew and they just like, I yeah. can literally not imagine that someone in my community, yeah. let's just we're speaking about community, would be in her apartment dead for four weeks. Yeah, that for me, like I hope I would never understand that. I do not want. Yeah, but it's so it's, it's so shocking. I think it's yeah. such a sad situation as well. It is a sad situation to be. That's the word. It's it's really really sad. Yeah, you don't want to die and nobody cares at no. all for four weeks. And then what I also realized is that the whole thing of, if we look at the African way of being in terms of the whole community and the European way of being, um, I have a, a elderly friend, he's eight, I think almost 80, and he would never in a million years ask me to help him with groceries or whatever, what I yeah. have to be the one like, no, okay, you're going to this part, let me take you, let me da da da, let's yeah. help you unpack, and never. And then of course, when you look at the, African society and you look at maybe someone who's maybe AIDS, he's like, oh my, <sighs> you know, it's like expected. Now yeah. it's your time yeah. to pay me back for exactly. all the things that, like, there's not even a question about yeah. me asking, no, you should already be, by the time I've yeah. already woken up in the morning, you've already made my tea or mm -hmm. done whatever because that's what I expect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the other hand, where you have the European society, it's like, oh, no, 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 please, yeah. like, you yeah. even send you away because yeah. I don't want to be a burden to you. Yeah. You have your own life. Yeah. You just do whatever. I'll, I'll survive. And I think that's how also they end up being in a situation where maybe they fall or yeah. something happens and nobody is aware of, yeah. of that because they're always like, in a way, mm. almost pushing you away. Like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Don't, don't worry about me. I'm good. Yeah. And they actually go to nursing homes. And they take an African parent yeah. to a nursing home. They were like, hey. <laughs> You're sending me to jail. I will cast you. <laughs> I will die and I will leave you a big content. Uh, hey. <laughs> me, your mother. You no, want to put me in an organ after I carried you for nine months. Uh -huh. eh? uh -huh. You disturbed me. <laughs> that will be a whole shebang. You can't yeah. even no, that's try not to. An option. No, it's not an option that's at all. It's not going to work. It's yeah. not going to slide. It's, uh, it, is, uh, it really is uh, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of differences. I mean, and also effects, uh, a lot of effects. Uh, how this because now we talk about the mental health part of that in an individualistic society it brings loneliness oh, yeah. but also in the uh, community uh, feeling it can also be overwhelming and yeah. uh, anxiety and yeah. you know and also that you could be uh, that feel, feeling of failing or the fear yes. of failing as well yeah. can you know constantly keep you anxious and definitely and, and there's always this community talk Yes. Which also brings an invisible burden. Mm -hmm. I don't know how somehow I managed to switch it off. Mm -hmm. But I remember there was always like, oh, what did Anita do? Like there was always like, there's yeah. always something going around for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's overwhelming sometimes, to be honest. Yeah. And then when you, when you do well and meet the expectations, then uh, there's a sense of entitlement that, yeah. okay, now you've done well. Yes. 
you're going to take the your cousins and your everyone. sisters and siblings to school you're going to everyone. build a house for everybody and mm -hmm. you're going to do this and that and mm -hmm. then it's what about me now the one yeah. who's actually working hard and doing everything you know doing everything it's it's incredible but yeah, uh, viewers I, and listeners, <laughs> I hope you're actually down there in the comments sharing your experiences as well or whatever thoughts you have around this topic. I don't need you. You don't need me. Mm. So we don't come in contact. We don't have any contact with each other. To see people gather like this in Europe, it's only in festival. In the winter, you don't see such thing. Is it not because of the weather that people are not always together? Maybe, maybe, but... In my humble opinion, it's like it's just the mentality. It's the mentality, the way of seeing, the way of looking at things. That's, that, make, that, that, makes, that makes us different to them. But then also we cannot change the fact that the world is changing. Yeah. You know, um, the Africa that we grew up in oh, yeah. is so different from uh, the yeah, people who were born like, let's Definitely. say, 10 years ago or something. Yes. You know? Uh, are we yeah. Africans going to become more like Europeans and Europeans mm -hmm. more like Africans? <laughs> or I think that's making a valid point, actually, because yeah. looking back at when I was maybe in primary school around the age of nine, uh, Africa was such a faraway place. And mm -hmm. do you even have a TV? It was really like this vague type of thing. So leave alone knowing about the culture and our, our ways of, of being and doing. Yeah. But what I see now, like, for instance, if I go to a regular restaurant or uh, I don't know, a bar or whatever, they're, they're playing Afrobeats. Yeah. They're having, uh, I mean, they're, people are eating fufu and they're yeah. like, and I'm like, wow, I just stop and pause and see like, whoa, this is really mingling really well. And I yeah. think in that sense that also in the Dutch culture, I don't believe that all the families are like that right now, that if you show up at six, that they will kick you out. Yeah. Actually, the contrary, because yeah. I think that the whole blend and mix in Gen Z, of course, I think if you tell uh, average Gen Z in maybe Rotterdam, one of the bigger cities, yeah. uh, that this happened, they'll be like, oh. But why? You know, yeah. because we're all becoming a little bit more one and closer to each other because of this globalization mm -hmm. and the culture cannot be left behind in that sense. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's true. That's true. I, I do have, for example, me, my in-laws, they're amazing people. So it's, um, they also have a very different perspective of life, yeah. uh, like the Dutch. Or if I walk in when they're having dinner, then yeah. they'll put a plate out for yes. me, you know. So they, they have that sense of community. You can see that closeness. Yeah. So it's not it's not every family no. that's like that. The same way as in Africa, not every same. family is the whole community. There are All people the who are really lonely and yeah. alone, and they have to uh, figure out life on their own. So yeah, it's um, it's here and there, you know. But um, yeah, I don't know. With uh, listeners and uh, viewers, I mean, you can also reflect in your, on your own experiences. Please don't forget to share in the comments. You know, we would like to hear from you. We really like to hear from you. Definitely, okay. and subscribe. <laughs> oh yeah, and subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. Follow us and uh, click the notification button as well, so you stay uh, abreast of what we keep bringing to you. Yeah, um, yeah, and I think also if we look um, at the trends in the future, uh, being a society now with especially in the bigger cities in the Netherlands, where we yeah. are such a diverse mix of different cultures. I think even more so we need mm. to find our communities and yeah. unite and also make sure that we really do look out for each other. I mean, we ha we've yeah. had this phase where, okay, the first generation came and it was maybe survival, let's say, just to put it yeah. in black and white. Not everybody, but just in black in the way it would just for the sake of this uh, example. Second generation was like, yes, maybe a bit more individualistic because we have mm. to s prove and survive and we need to not disappoint our parents yeah. and what I see for the future as a trend like the third generation that is here or maybe fourth generation they'll be like but there's nothing wrong we're just yeah. here together yeah. I do not know what you're talking about with this whole we're just being mm. we're living and yeah. we're not even concerned about who does what <coughs> which call because it's all interchangeable it is it's mingling yeah. and that's not even part of the discussion anymore so that's yeah. how I would see it for the future yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, I believe for, I believe so as well. I mean, that's the utopia we we're going for. We're right? looking forward to. Yeah. <laughs> I think from a from an economic perspective, if you'd say like, okay, what is better than for the whole economic environment? Mm -hmm. Is it better to be more of a community or is it better to be more individualistic? Mm -hmm. um, I like this African saying where they say like, alone you go far, but together you go further. Yeah. I think if you're looking for short-term objectives maybe not really including the human aspect, mm -hmm. you will go far. Yeah. But then I think, like, are you going to be alone at the top? Are you going to mm -hmm. celebrate it by yourself? You know, are you going to share your victory with who is mm -hmm. going to be there with you? 
So I would say like it's more of a slower approach, but I think at the end of the day, we're humans. We need mm. this connection yeah. regardless of where you're from, Europe or Africa. And then it's in our nature yeah. that we need each other. That's why when you're at home for maybe more than two days, you start talking to yourself yeah, yeah. and you're not even like you're mentally okay. So we do need this this mirror or reflection, whether it's positive or negative, we have yeah. to have people surrounding us and validation and yeah. we need to be seen. Yeah. So I think in the long term, um, I would say community is really what it comes yeah. down to. Yeah, I completely agree with you. And uh, even though I know some people might argue then why is Europe more advanced than Africa, for example. Um, and I, liked, I always like to say this, that I think when we talk about economics, yes, it's about money. So yes. we can say that, okay, one is more advanced than the other. But then we humans, we are creatures of connection. Exactly. And uh, without just having the financial means and n missing the other, other things, you're not going to thrive. It's empty and meaningless. Exactly. Exactly. So I think community at the end of the day is still very important. Um, we see a lot of happy people who are cash poor. I call yes. it cash. For me, poverty yeah. can be so many things. Exactly. And it's really just cash poor, but they're so happy and fulfilled in exactly. so many other ways. Yes. And there are people who are yeah, not cash poor, but they are lacking in so many other and ways. And they're miserable. So they're really miserable. You know? Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, like I would say, I would rather live in a co community and die today and people find me today than live exactly rich and die today and people find About me yourself. four weeks later. Yeah. You know, yeah, then it's, uh, well, I'll be dead, so it wouldn't matter, but, <laughs> but still, <laughs> you will get the notion. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. About that. yeah, yeah. But yeah. Yeah, so I, I think in conclusion, mm. I mean, this is a nice way to wrap it up because uh, in the end of the day, we are, we are humans. Yeah. And uh, the fact that, in Africa, we are so connected to who we are as humans, makes us be more of a community. Yeah. And I think in Europe, we're a bit de de detached yeah. from who we are supposed to be as humans. We've yeah. become almost sort of an automatic pilot way of living. Like, yeah. I need to go to school, I need to do this, I need to make a lot of money, and da -da -da. Mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter how. Yeah. Yeah. The how in Africa is very important, and yeah. I think that's something we can definitely bring back to the equation, and the world would be such a better place if we right. did bring back the whole human aspect into the yeah. equation. Yeah, very, very true. I don't know if you get this as well, but there's a different energy when I land in Tanzania oh. at the airport and when I land back in oh, Amsterdam. Yeah. <laughs> there's just like, it's a difference between depression. <laughs> I know, right? It's like, when I land in Tanzania, yes. I'm like, woohoo, yeah. I'm here full of energy. When I land back in Amsterdam, I'm like, oh, okay. here we go. <laughs> Let's do this. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, you shouldn't lose yourself for the sake of a community, I think, but in general it's nicer to have a communal feeling than just be on your own. A community will also poke their noses in your business. That's true, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, in that sense, yes, but in general, I guess the intention is still, like if they poke their nose in your business, is it for the idea of gossiping or is it because they're looking out for you? It's and I think one. maybe that distinction is what matters. You are no longer your own person. You belong to everybody. Everybody belongs to you. Yeah, and then you like maybe that's a lot of stress as well. Yeah. Yeah. So and and some of the good things people say about uh, the individualistic thing is you are able to shine. You are able to reach the maximum of your potential. I guess so. But then, does that make you happy to shine on your own? I think if I like, I would rather have like a very tight community and you can still be yourself within that community, but I think to just be on your own at the top, that doesn't interest me that much. Mm. There are pros and cons in Europe. I mean, mm. things are always on the dots. Mm. What, you, what, what is being said is what you can expect. There's yeah. little room for spontaneity. It's really mm. all structured and organized, which yeah. of course brings a society where if tomorrow I um, break my leg or have something going on with my health, that at least within a certain period of time, you know that there'll be the care that, that is needed, of course. Yeah. But then at the same time, you're in Europe. Who's going to drive you to the hospital? Uh, you have <laughs> to then, call an ambulance, exactly. which is so expensive. It's so expensive. <laughs> so then there you see there's a plus and there's a minus. But then at the same time, in, maybe in Africa, if I break my leg, I will have 10 people carrying me yeah. either way yeah. to the hospital. And yeah, of course, it's, it's, it's something you cannot really argue about. Yeah. Like, it's also a personal preference and yeah. how you see yourself in this world. Because at the end of the day, 
you're going to find your home wherever you are home, whenever yeah. you're home with yourself. It doesn't yeah. matter where you are. You can always that's move. True. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. 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 So, well, yeah. I mean, I couldn't agree more, really. Uh, everything that you said, uh, we are on the same page there. It's, uh, it's really important. But then also, I want uh, viewers and listeners to also understand these are our views and opinions and our experiences that we are sharing here. Yes. So no judgment, please. Uh, and please go to the comment section and leave your own views and experiences. We would really love to hear from you. Uh, with Most that being definitely. said, yeah, we really thank you for uh, you know, taking your time to listen to us. Watch out for the next episode. And how will you know? Do not forget to follow, subscribe, and push the notification button so that you do not miss a thing. This is the Africa Web TV, the Thank you African so much. Narrative <laughs> Podcast. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You are from Uganda. I think there is advantages to, to both, but if I was to choose, I'm going to choose the African system. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely choosing the African community and, and all that. But I haven't, haven't lived here for as long as you are living now. You still cannot say one good thing about this system. I mean, I, I, it's not that I can't say one good thing about the system, it's that uh, one of the good things I'll say is, you see where the taxes go. <laughs> here, here you see where the taxes go. You know, you see the roads, you see the hospitals. In, uh, in our countries, you don't see where the taxes go. You just see someone's belly growing bigger, so <laughs> that's, uh, that's the difference. I'm a king, yes, I'm a king, go